Welcome to Building Mobile Image Processing Applications using Delphi XE4. My name is Serena DuPont, Product Manager for RAT Studio, and I welcome you to this Code Rage Mobile session. During this session, we're going to cover how to use some of the powerful filters that FireMonkey provides. FireMonkey actually includes a built in image effects engine with over 50 GPU powered effects, and those range from shadow effects, blur effects, sepia effects, tune effects, etc. Uh, the effects can be simply enabled or disabled by checking the enabled flag for the component in the object inspector or of course also programmatically. Now as part of our session we're also going to have a look at how you can access images that you already have on your mobile device, your iOS device, whether that be your iPhone or your iPad, how you can access them and retrieve them for image processing such as applying different filters, how you can take a new photo using the built-in camera app on your iOS device and then apply filters, and how you can share your final creations via the included share sheet support. And accessing the camera app, retrieving images from the camera roll, and also the share sheet support are all enabled via the extended action support that we have implemented. So let's have a look at some demos. Now to get started, I'm going to create a new mobile application. And then I'm also going to walk you through some of the demos that we ship with the product. Now you can of course create a new mobile application by going to File New Mobile Application. You'll see this wizard that I'm showing you here. But I'm just going to create a new project and add it to my existing project group. And then I'm going to drop a button onto my form. This is a very simple demo. And also an image, T-Image Control. I'm going to resize the image. And then I'm also going to drop the blur effect. And you can see the blur effect lives on the effects category in the tool palette here. And there are very diff various different effects that you can drag and drop onto your form. And I'm going to drop it onto my form, and then I'm going to parent it to my image. I'm going to select the image one and load an image. Okay. Okay. And of course, you'd also want to load a high-res image, a high-res 2x version to support Retina devices. What you can see here is that by default, the blur effect is enabled, and I can toggle it to on or off. Okay. And of course, you'd also want to load a high-res image, a high-res 2x version to support Retina devices. What you can see here is that by default, the blur effect is enabled, and I can toggle it to on or off, of course. Now what I want to do is I'm going to enable it by default, but I want to be able, on button click, be able to set whether or not the effect is applied. So what I want to do is be able to toggle the blur effect state on or off. And so I'm going to change the text on my button here to say apply effect. Resize the button. Double click, blur effect one dot enabled, quotes not blur effect one dot enabled. Okay, now let's have a look at this uh, little demo that we just created and deploy it to the simulator. Here you see that the little demo loads the image with the effect enabled and I can click and disable, I can click and apply the effect. I can of course also change the blur effect and adjust it, so I can just select the blur effect here and a softness I could increase this to really blur the image and I can toggle between the different settings here, I could choose 0 0.5, 1, etc. You can fully adjust that depending on how you want the effect to look. Now let's have a look at another sample here. This is the iOS camera code snippet. And this is a real basic example that shows you how to retrieve an image from the camera roll and then display it on a T-image component. And all we have here is we have a toolbar with a parented 
uh, T label component. The T label component has their the style lookup settings at the tool label. We also have a, a button on the form. So I have created an on click event, and the on click event is on did finish taking. And in this case, we are assigning to the T image the bitmap that we've pulled from our camera roll. And of course, we also have the actionless component. Um, as one of the things that you will see here is when we have the button parented to the toolbar, we have actually hooked it up to one of the built-in actions. And you can just do that by dropping an actionless component onto your form and then uh, connecting a control to it, such as a button. New standard action, media library, and you can select take photo from library to access existing images, take photo from camera, or show share sheet to share the image. This is another example. This is one of our other code snippets, iOS code snippets. And as you can see here is we have an image that we've preloaded for demo purposes, but this of course could also be blank. We have the take photo functionality, and we also have the share functionality. And what this does is the take photo fu functionality um, uses an action to take an image using the media library action take photo from camera, and then share uses the show share sheet action. And I can see for take photo, we also have on did finish taking. We set up an event for that. And that will display the picture that we've taken from the camera. And share will actually, on before execute, will take the image that is shown on the T image that's displayed and share that. And what that means is if, for example, you have your Facebook account information saved on your iOS device in the iOS settings dialog or your Twitter account, you're then able to share the image. Let's have a look at uh, effect filters demo. This is an example where we're actually combining multiple filters. So the little blur example that I showed earlier just applied one effect to an image. In this case, we're actually using the filter class to be able to apply two filters at the same time. And as we have a look at the code here, we have an on-change on change event set up. And we're able to take the input of one filter and then also apply it to the output of another filter. So we're mixing two different filters and applying them to our image in this example. Let's deploy this to our simulator. And here you see we have our base image, and then below we have the image with the filters applied. And you can see this is actually blending the two filters and combining them. Another demo I'd like to have a look at is our photo editor demo. So here's the photo editor demo. This is a sample that ships with the product in the FireMonkey mobile folder. And as you can see here is we've used form inheritance in this particular example. So we have our base form and then we have our two inherited forms, our iPad form, and we also have our iPhone form. And if we have a look at the iPad form, what we also have done is we have created this overlay. And this is something that's common in mobile applications today, types of um, tutorial. It's a type of a tutorial, basically. It creates a transparent overlay. In this case, we have two images with arrows, and we also have text that are part of a T layout. And that T layout is only shown if no image is visible. You can see here top help that visible is only shown if the image container is empty. Now let's have a look at our base form here. I've created a set of custom actions. You can see here we have also two categories, media library category and then our filters category. And what we're doing is we're calling the set effect for each of these actions on their execute call. And then what we're also doing is we're signing those actions back to our button controls. So mobile applications don't have file menus. What they have instead is you could have a tab control, for example, or you could have a toolbar with buttons, which is what we have in this case. We have a, a T toolbar component and we have four speed buttons. And if you define a group name, 
for the speed buttons, then all the speed buttons that share that group name can be used as part of a segmented control. And what we've done here is we have selected our control. As you saw here, we have set up some actions. And what we can do here is we can select our button and then we can just call our effect that we have defined in our action list. Now I'm going to show you what this application looks like on my device. And I have this app running here on my device. Uh, this is an app that I created previously and it just slightly customized the sample that we ship with the product with some custom graphics etc. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the camera icon to take a photo, select use, and then I can apply the different filters as you can see here example the blur filter and then if I click the action toolbar button you can see that this invokes a share sheet menu I can share it via email I can share it via Twitter or Facebook if I have defined and set my Twitter and Facebook logging credentials then I can also share via Twitter and Facebook you would have to set that in your iOS settings dialog I could print and this will display any AirPrint enabled printers for me so I could print my image I could assign to a contact, save to camera roll, etc. I can also do the same. I can load an image that I already have. So here's an image that I've loaded. I can select choose. And then, of course, I can also apply the effect, one of the effects to it. And I could share that image as well. So thank you very much for joining me for today's session. And now we're going to open it up for some Q&A. One of the questions was about uh, sending a SMS from an application and I provided the link to that. There's actually a doc wiki link um, that describes that. Um, we can also consider working on an additional sample for that specifically. If you have a look at the share sheet sample, you would have to use the text message property instead of the image property. So I would recommend looking at the share sheet sample. Um, how do you check if there's a printer in the share sheet? Um, that is another question. The share sheet will show any available printers that are AirPrint enabled. So it's a standard iOS 6 uh, feature via share sheet and um, it's shown by default and when you click it, um, it will tell you that either no AirPrint printers have been found or it will show you the available ones that are on your network that you can access. And I've, I've put up the link to the iOS, iOS tutorial for share sheet. Great. Yeah. Great, I see that. In DocWiki. We have a lot of great tutorials on the DocWiki, and I really recommend looking at them. Try to cover all the key topics um, with detailed step-by-step -step tutorials. Here's a follow-up from Stephen about if you use tabs instead of individual forms to get transitions, how does this deal with memory? 20 tabs? Hmm. I guess it depends on how you're using your application. I mean, <laughs> When you're building an iPhone application, for example, you're not supposed to have more than five visible tabs. And what I mean by visible, I mean tabs that are styled with a tab icon and um, aligned where the tab position is set to TP bottom so that you see the actual tab glyphs and the tab text. Of course, there could be other apps where you're using the tabs with TP none or TP dots. TP none allows you to use the tabs. Each tab item has a different view, so to speak. Uh, TP dots displays a little dot at the bottom to indicate what tab item you're on and allows you to also navigate quickly between the different tabs. But in that case, you're not actually seeing a tab button. If you're using 20 tabs, um, you, c you can certainly try it. I think it just depends on the type of application that you're building. Uh, if you're building an iPhone application, uh, you don't have enough screen real estate to make them visible tabs. Uh, in that case, you should have your five tabs for the key feature areas or focus areas. On the fifth tab, you should use the more um, style, which is the three dots. And then on that tab, you should display the additional style option, uh, the additional uh, application options, excuse me, via a list. And that is pretty standard if you're looking at the music app, for example, on your iPhone. So without knowing any more details, uh, it's, more, it's difficult to um, answer that differently. And again, here, here's the link to the code snippets in SourceForge, including the share sheet code snippet example. So that's all the examples are, are at this URL. For video playback, right now we support playing a local video file. So as long as you 
deploy the video file to your iOS device. Uh, we don't, or somehow get it mm -hmm. from some remote system, save it as a file. You can play it. We don't, we don't support streaming protocols currently, right, for, for T Media Player. Yeah, team, there is a media player example that you can look at, but it's for um, audio files. So we have a media player sample that you can look at in the FireMonkey fo mobile folder, and um, that will actually get the music clips that you have, let's say, in your music directory and display them for you for playback, but that is for audio file. So that's, again, under... There's two folders for mobile. There's FireMonkey mobile, which are larger examples. Exactly. And then and iOS code the, snippets, correct? Code snippets, yeah. And all of those are actually get installed with the product there in documents, public documents, Embarcadero at Studio 11.0. But I do highly recommend um, going to a SourceForge directory. You've seen a lot of different demos um, the last couple of days and also in the uh, webinar that I did last week and also previous webinars. And we do try to get them all up on the SourceForge directory. So that's really the best way to access all the latest samples. And Chris was asking if he could apply filters to video in real time, and I said not currently. Filters are for images right now. Yes, that's correct. Other than if you want to do something in your own code to a, you know, a video file and then play that video file, but but we don't do anything for video that way. Stephen followed up again. He just has a lot of forms to show. You can slide them in, or you can have them appear. Yeah, I mean, you could you could just show the form at the time that you need to show it. Um, or you could use tabs and have um, all your content on one form. I think it really depends on what you, what kind of application you're building. And then he's saying he doesn't want to run out of memory. Well, you can create forms dynamically and destroy them. You don't have to have FMX form files Correct. in your project. Correct. So, and Danny adds a comment saying the sample folder after install can be easily, oh, yeah, up, he's talking about the right mouse click the sample folder in the install and do an SVN update. Yeah, that's actually a great um, a great comment. Yeah. Thank you, Daniel. This, he's talking about, you know, you can use a tool like uh, Tortoise, for example, via the File Explorer on Windows to um, update the sample folder, and then we'll pull down the latest samples and any additional ones that we have. So thank you very much. That's a great comment. Chris is asking about video on 3D plane. No video is still in the HD or 2D world. Uh, you can always have 3D and 2D on the same if you have a HD form with a 3D viewport and to play the video, show the video in the 2D section. So if you're like, had a 3D view of the solar system planets running around, sure. you click on one and you want to play some video, you'd play that in the 2D space or layout or layer. There was that, again, the printer testing. There is a T printer class in addition for but, all the platforms. Yes, but on iOS, the, the common way is to print via AirPrint, and that's actually in iOS. The way printing works on iOS in general, that's the common way to print. And the easiest way to do that is implemented via ShareSheet, which is also yep. the standard implementation on iOS in general if you're looking at iOS apps. I'm betting if I asked Anders, there's probably an iOS API to see if there's a printer connected somehow. To yeah. your device. Is Anders going to be coming back today? He's doing Another two sessions, sessions, but he's he's in the air on the way to Boston. So we'll see when he lands what the timing might be. Okay. Okay. So Serena, thank you very much for coming back in again, both two days at Code Rage. Great. Thank you very much for having me. I hope you enjoyed the session and uh, more great sessions to come today.